Don in London, hello. December the 20th, 2009, my video is all about recovery from addiction. Addiction either to substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour, quite as addictive. Work, relationships, collecting, filling a gap inside me. And uh, trying to be perfect, and never so. Driven by fear, putting on a brave face, utilizing ego too much to the extreme to cover up whatever that fear was and I suspect it was fear of being found out of not being good enough and it's a tremendous disabler to have that fear inside and we don't know we've got it really if we've had it from a very young age because it it's there always but we don't know what it is just some ill ill feeling or discontent or irritability and what did I do uh, somebody gave me a drink when I was very young and it took the edge off it took the edge off in a, a most pleasant way it took away the fear the gap made me relaxed convivial joyful and I was far too young and I stopped learning how to deal with those fears or those feelings and drink offered an opportunity to push down the feelings and pretend to be okay didn't always pretend because I started to learn that it was okay to have a drink and then to feel okay. So from conviviality to dependence to addiction and it seems it took me a long time to understand that dependence came quite early and addiction came quite late but it was always there in some form or other and I didn't understand it and I would look down on drunks who couldn't hold their liquor and I never knew that I would become one of those drunks who was unable to hold his liquor and was quite unable to stop. So, what happened to me? Well, I ended up in the gutter, looking up at everybody else, staring at them, judging them as foolish and stupid, and blaming the world for all my woes and problems. And of course the world didn't do anything to me, I kept on doing things to myself. And why on earth would a person who has enough intele intellectual capacity, drive, determination and ambition to successfully climb two career ladders at least and survive in some very difficult situations, finally break down? And the answer was simply striving to be perfect and doing what I thought was right so that you would like me or I would fit in broke me because my self-will failed and I exhausted myself with work, relationships and drinking and the torment in all of this is as we get to addiction we have no understanding that self-will is keeping us drinking because that's the only thing that's working until it doesn't work anymore and then the rest of the story is calamity, disaster and we're very lucky if we find any form of recovery at all. So what helped me? Family, friends, community, professionals kept me alive long enough to have a breakthrough. And that simple breakthrough was I cannot do this on my own and I'm stuck and it cannot get any worse because I've gone through the long period of waking up not wanting to be awake and not even wishing to be alive. So these days, one day at a time, I'm able to make life work. I feel life as it is today, as best I can. There is always going to be some, I suppose, denial, because that's just part of human nature, about my whole overall condition, but that's just part of life. But generally, I get the balance right in my feelings. Happy, sad, love, hate, or whatever is going on. I have my repertoire of emotions back and they tell me what is going on for me and then I can think about it and say to myself how am I feeling why what can I do so that moment of clarity I cannot do it on my own led to uh, an understanding that there was help out there for me and it came in the form of a fellowship Alcoholics Anonymous and we're very lucky if we ever get that far because most people get stuck in the melody cannot get out of it and have a prolonged miserable time drinking because they have to and it is a disease it's a sickness of the emotions and also the body so unless you have it 
you don't understand it, which is quite understandable. Why should you understand something you haven't got? But if you do have it, denial will keep us drinking as long as it takes to kill us if we don't understand what is going on. So when we feel the, the need to take the edge off with a drink, it's an indicator that something is not working in our lives. And the biggest coping strategy open to anybody, because it's legal, is to drink. So it's difficult. It's very difficult. And culture says a man is a man when he drinks as much as he can and still holds his liquor. And that applies to women these days too. So whoever we are, we are set up inevitably by the way we look at our drinking behaviour. So AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, was the way for me. Maybe one in a hundred gets the message uh, of those who try it. And it's not for want of trying that people want to stop. It's because they can't. And judgment of, of oneself and judgment of others is the biggest disabler. Because we see the malady in other people. And we're not as bad as that, are we? So what does AA do for me? Here's the preamble which is shared at every meeting. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is the desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And uh, I'm just about getting about in London at the moment, so I did get to a meeting last night, but I have uh, severe pain and it's not going away and it's getting worse. But that's just the way it is, just at the moment. And that meeting was good because it was all about what is it like to get into recovery when we're new. And in the room, obviously, people who are very brand new, uh, people who have just started on their journey of sobriety through to people with 35 years last night. And the message is the same. If we are willing, open and honest, and face the truth, and can accept what is going on for us, we have a, a, a chance to live choices today. And that's to be sober. So it's a one-day program with 12 steps of action. And those 12 steps of action keep me going to help me with my attitude and behaviour so that I understand where I am and that life can work. And December is all about the 12th step of AA, which is all about sharing the message with newcomers and generally about what sobriety is like. And I have to say today, even though I'm in abject pain, the gift is I'm alive, I'm sort of functioning. And my outlook isn't so bad because the pain will go eventually I hope and the daily reflections which I share here this book coming to the end because it's nearly the end of the year December the 20th it says this the rewards of giving this is indeed the kind of giving that actually demands nothing he does not expect his brother sufferer or sister sufferer to pay him or even love him and then he discovers by the divine paradox of this kind of giving he has found his own reward whether his brother or sister has yet received anything or not and that's about sharing the message through experience with 12 step work I came to understand the rewards of giving that demands nothing in return at first I expected, to recover, I expected recovery in others but I soon learned that this did not happen once I acquired the humility to accept that, fa that fact that every 12th step call was not going to result in a, a success, then I was open to receive the rewards of selfless giving. And it's a bit like unconditional love. It's just the way it is. And the gift in all of this is, is acceptance. So I end these videos with the serenity prayer to God of your understanding, or simply good conscience. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is and remains for me just for today.